the National Anti-Money Laundering Oversight Committee, NAMLOC, presented certificates of participation to stakeholders involved in reviewing the recent amendments to St. Lucia's anti-money laundering, terrorism and proliferation financing legislation. These amendments are critical to St. Lucia's application for re-rating to be removed from enhanced follow-up. One piece of legislation which will impact several service providers is the Virtual Assets Business Act, which was recently passed in December 2022. Natalie de Sose, Executive Director of the Financial Services Regulatory Authority, FSRA, explained that a virtual asset is a digital representation of value that can be traded or used for payment or investment. Most virtual assets that you would know, uh, would have heard of, would be like crypto um, currencies or virtual currencies such as Bitcoin or Litecoin. And today, it is reported that over 20,000 of those are in circulation. She said a virtual asset cannot be equated to a fiat currency. Uh, what do I mean by that? A fiat currency is a legal tender issued by a government, while a cryptocurrency or a virtual currency is backed by a blockchain technology um, that is not, I would say, um, overseen or overviewed by any central authority. Disouze added that blockchain technology has the ability to allow the transfer of value around the world quickly and efficiently, with law enforcement authorities reporting that illicit traders are using such technology to trade in cyberspace to conduct transfers between multiple accounts in multiple jurisdictions using virtual identities, where the owner of the asset isn't always known. So you can understand how difficult it is for law enforcement to trace a transaction. And due to that emerging risk, the Financial Action Task Force, which we, you have heard, um, it's called the FATF, have issued um, recommendations to deal with um, such emerging risks. And they have issued recommendation 15 out of the 40 recommendations that have been issued by the Financial Action Task Force. These recommendations provide guidance to national authorities, such as NAMLOC, virtual asset providers, financial entities and the like, to better understand the risks and potential exposure in relation to money laundering, terrorist and proliferation financing. It calls for institutions to conduct effective and continuous customer due diligence. That Virtual Asset Business Act would provide for anyone wanting to provide virtual asset business from or within St. Lucia would have to be licensed. That means they would have to submit an application to the Financial Services Regulatory Authority to be approved as a virtual asset service provider. The executive director stated that NAMLOC is aware that virtual assets are a burning issue for many stakeholders and the intent of the legislation is not to stifle investment opportunities. We as prudential regulator and even as the money laundering or terrorist financing regulators such as the Financial Intelligence Authority, we understand that the objective is not to stifle the growth of um, virtual asset but rather to make sure that we remain compliant. A number of key stakeholders have volunteered their services to NAMLOC to address gaps in St. Lucia's anti-money laundering legislation and the ongoing national risk assessment. For the National Competitiveness and Productivity Council, Glenn Simon reporting.